<laughs> uh, ooh, this is going to be an interesting game. Welcome to Summoner's Rift. It's going to be a top lane Lissandra. Oh yeah, yeah that, that, I, I like the teleport and the Oriana considering. It's an interesting combo though. Like Oriana goes over the wall with the claw, counts as a ball delivery system for Oriana, or of course Vi can ult in for a ball delivery system, which is kind of nice. Indeed. We shall see how things go. I really should have said a mark point, but whatever. It's been a while since you and I cast it together. Indeed. Also, I still haven't got into game yet. Really? Nope. I am 1 minute 10 into the game. <laughs> it's fine, nothing crazy will happen. Uh, you say anyway. nothing crazy will happen, Lucian and Braum have already gone aggressive, they've actually managed to land down the first of concussive blows and just force Caitlyn away from the Golden Camp. Interesting. Uh, so, just usual level 1 skirmish. Indeed. Just making sure all the champion stuff is sorted. Caitlyn. Going to attempt to back. Oh, very nice. A bit of aggression now to Thrash, actually nearly getting the full concussive blows out. Yes, indeed. Meanwhile, across the rest of the map, very little actually happening. That, that seems to happen quite a lot in the higher tier games. It's like something crazy is happening, and people are sufficiently polite, I guess, to save their aggression until after that one bit of aggression is already done. It's, it's kind of nice from that from the upper levels. Well, it's still be nice to see that level 1 all in. It's just more the trinket changes force people not to go super hyper aggressive. Indeed. Looking across all the lanes, we do have a very scary bottom lane uh, combo on this blue side. Grand Lucian is definitely toasted as one of the best AE carry matchups, I would say, for a brown because he can just drop that concussive blow so quickly with the double shot passive from the Light Slinger. It's very, very potent to deal with. Thresh Caitlyn, I haven't seen that combo in quite some time, but of course Thresh is still very, very strong. We'll have to see how that lane pans out. Yeah, I've I've always thought really Braum and Thresh were going to be the top two supports of this new, well, especially since this patch, especially with all the aggression coming out here. Uh, the Concussive Blows does manage to land the stun, but unfortunately it's going to result in very little here. Lucian does get caught though in the death sentence, and he is going to start taking an absolute beating, and even Braum with more Concussive Blows stopping the aggression outright. Very nicely played there from the support. And Jalvin is going to sneak up into this top lane. Unfortunately, Lissandra is on ball, knows what's going on, but it's not going to stop him. As all goes in with the Flag Dragon, a very nice flash! Keeps Kex alive on Lissandra, but unfortunately Rise is overpowering, does a huge amount of damage to both in the red bluff, and there we go, first blood straight onto Jarvan, and Vi immediately in with the counter gank, a nice flag and drag will save Jarvan's hide for a little bit longer, complete with the snare of Rise, a very nice counter play there from the blue side. What I will say is that is very, very unlucky from Kex, that was incredibly unlucky because he used the Glacial Path Claw just before Jarvan came in for the gank. Used it for the wave clear and then Jarvan came in at the exact time Lissandra didn't have her escape up. She just melted basically. That, that's a terrible pun, you should feel bad for it. To be honest that was an unintentional pun, but I will take the credit for it as <laughs> oh, well. Yep, Thresh goes incredibly low there and the bot lane actually manages to get a nice death sentence onto uh, Lucian. Also, right within the tower, but unfortunately, Caitlyn not there to follow up with the Yule Snap Trap to land a little bit of extra damage along with the snare. And that mid lane of Cassidy and Oriana is still going toe to toe, but Oriana's really starting to put her foot down and show Cassidy who's boss. Yeah, of course, we know that Cassidy is a champion that gets very, very strict at level 6, so we'll have to see what he does at that point. He has decided to run with the teleport, so I would imagine if he is going to be roaming elsewhere. Engagement in the top lane, actually. The Sandra going very like Good flash from Rise evades the Vault Breaker, and I've just stolen your job. Briefly. Yeah, no, no, that's fine, because I was still playing on Director Cabot 2, so said it was engaged. I'm going to top lane, though. Kex gets destroyed yet again. Very nicely played there from Jolman to land that stun and necessary muggins to secure a kill there. In the bot lane, though, 
Sebex on Caitlyn goes incredibly low. Really shouldn't be hanging around too much longer because Braum will take advantage of this and use his um, concussive blows and the Winter's Bite to start landing those stun stacks. I think the reason Caitlyn's sticking around right now is she should have a summoner advantage over Lucian right now. Lucian burnt a heal in a very early engagement, whereas Caitlyn still has hers up, which means that if things do go badly, then she can still utilize that. And if that hook landed, which it doesn't, you could use the Relentless Pursuit to get away from that. It means that engagement doesn't go too badly. And good use of the Unbreakable to completely negate and stop in its tracks, of course, the Pult of a Peace mark Maker, one of the big things of Brawl. Meanwhile, in the middle lane, Oriana went in aggressive with that Shockwave, but Rift Walk from Kasten, enough to get him to safety. Both of the mid lanes now at level 6. Mikey's go aggressive on to Lucian. Can they get through to it? No, it's not. He's going to flash away. Unfortunately, though, Brom is still hanging around. Kaylin continues to chase, though. Gets the kill. But unfortunately, she is going to go down. Jarvan hanging out in the wings does land the flag and actually get the kill with it as well. And Thresh is now going to have to run away, screaming like a little girl all the way. Otherwise, he will get beaten up there by the Heart of the Frey Lord and the Prince of Demacia. Indeed. Oh, I almost think the better joke would have been screaming like his victims, but I don't know. No, that doesn't quite work. Although the Sandra going very aggressive in the top lane, uses the Glacial Poth and gets out of the turret range and lands a huge amount of aggression on Zombie Rise. So she obviously has no fear of the undead. And to be honest, that new blade skin doesn't yeah. look too bad. It, it's fairly good. I Compared to a couple of recent skins, I think it is very, very nice. I don't, for example, uh, Night Hunter Rengar. I do not like that skin in-game. It just... There's something about it that I just do not like. Splash Art's cool, but besides that, just no. Oh, engagement at the bottom, like Captain Captain Yep, yeah, it's gonna be a huge amount of aggression right onto the trash. He does go down Solution, finally gets his revenge for Senna, but unfortunately, Jarvan is gonna be forced out entirely, and now Lucian right in the middle of all these minions is actually taking quite the beating. Caitlyn could have probably actually gotten the kill there. It's a very nice play, but Vi is coming in from the side, and a very nice assault and battery there from Vi will secure some damage and goes down immediately to the combination of Brom and Lucian. This bomb lane is really having an absolutely fantastic day, and he gets out with a double kill, technically an unofficial triple. So very nicely done. He's going to have a whale of a time in that bot lane. Yeah, I, that was a really, really good play from Lucian in that fight. Jarvan went incredibly low, but Lucian popped his heel at the exact oh, A little bit of engage happening up in the top lane, and it's going to be Rise using the overpowered and gets the kill on the Sandra right under the tower. Desperate power. Desperate power. I don't, I don't like saying ultimate power. Uh, there's, there's, there's Unleashed power, which is Send Result, and then there's Desperate power, there was, which is Rise's. Mm, I get confused with them from time to time, but mm, it's something you kind of have to learn when when you're apply, what, casting some of the lower level games because you never know who will show up. Lucian trying to go aggressive, the death sentence didn't land, but Caitlyn's place. It's, it's really not going to do a huge amount here. Although Lucian does go very low, the death sentence and the range is going to be enough. It's going to be the shutdown for Caitlyn, so she's going to be back in this game in no time at all. Comes out with the ace of the hole and gets the kill. Unbreakable does not save Braum this time, but Jarwin is straight on in there, goes straight in with the flag and drag combo starts beating up on Milky X looking to get that kill manages to secure it and goes on a killing spree but now is struggling to find Caitlyn who is all the way chilling behind the tower is actually going to go away and recall and Oriana gets a kill in the mid lane right under the tower yeah didn't uh, or did use the shockwave in a previous engagement casting was just sufficiently low that command attack plus the ignite was enough to pick up that kill and that's a disadvantage, of course, that Kassadin has running that teleport in a straight-up 1v1 engagement against a high-damage champion. If you can't burst him down quickly, you are likely to lose in a more protracted engagement. It's just... I suppose the unwritten law of new Kassadin. You kind of... Actually, no, it is. That's the unwritten law of old Kassadin. Newer Kassadin. Usually builds a good deal tankier. As we can see, he's gone for Catalyst. The protector will be going towards Rod of Ages, so he's a bit tankier. But you still do kind of rely on, at least later game, bursting down a target and then focusing elsewhere with Rithwalk having an incredibly short cooldown as well. Well, Kassadin was always like that. A little bit of a fight happening out in the bot lane. Thresh realising his mistake there, 
pulls in an unbreakable Brom which just blocks all the shots that Caitlyn will fire away. And uh, that's really going to be all she wrote on that one. It's just going to be another farm fest in the bot lane. Yes, indeed. Meanwhile, in the middle lane, Poke going back and forth <coughs> in the standard fashion, I think. It's fairly safe to say. A hook lands on the ground, but that's really not the target you need to be hitting. You aren't going to be able to keep damage down on him for a particularly long period of time. Thresh playing incredibly aggressive, and it's good to see that against what is a very threatening link composition. Yep, done, gets done. in with the death sentence. The coming comes out of the box as well. The gracial path. Uh, no, it's not the Gracial Path, that's uh, the Sandra. But anyway, the Brom also does come out, does manage to knock off Caitlyn, unfortunately results in very little. Uh, Vi does come in from the side, the Ace in the hole comes out, with Lucian blocks it, which might be a very bad idea, especially with Vi hovering around in the wings. Jarvin is coming down from the river as well, goes in with the Cataclysm, and starts laying down the damage, gets the kill, Milky Axe is still hovering around, and it's going to be a double kill for Jarvin, this bot lane is on fire, quite literally. And also, I need to, put, I need to mention that top lane play actually because Lissandra did make a very very good play in that previous fight actually stopped Ryze from coming in with the teleport by using that ring across W since teleport is now interrupted by Roots which is actually going to be helpful now it means a lot of top laners who used to be oh I don't have a root therefore well my opponent doesn't have a root therefore I can run so with teleport now I actually have to think twice it's it, the same applies to a Shen that they did the same with Stand United that it could be stopped by a route as well now, so they had kind of had to apply it to teleport because by concept they are very similar abilities. Of course, you can only use it on a champion if you're a Shen, but that's kind of your job. Yeah, but again that was the whole point of it anyway, is so you teleported to Ooh. an ally champion. Hawk yep, Hawk lands right down the bot lane. Unfortunately though, Lucian will use his relentless pursuit to get out of the way. Does bring in Kayla with the lance, but unfortunately the damage isn't going to be there and Ace in the hole is still on cooldown, so no kill coming up for Caitlyn today. Although Brom is not finished yet and Ryze is teleporting in. Ryze teleports in as well, gets the kill. Very nicely John. Even Jarvin gets in on that one and now Thresh is in serious trouble. It's 4v1. He ain't going to win this. I think he's just going to admit defeat. He's going to let the tower go for the kill, but no, Jarvin will go in and it's going to be TZ picking up that kill. Very nicely done. Ryze is now going to really start pulling away from Lissandra at this rate and the blue team will happily start dragging. Absolutely, very good objective control by them in the early game. They do have a massive kill advantage too right now. That's three and a half thousand gold, no, four and a half thousand gold nearing on actually is their advantage. Meanwhile Lissandra has been doing a good job pushing out that top lane. She may be able to take down that outer turret before casting comes in to stop her. But that's a rather one-sided engagement as far as I'm concerned. The turret does go down so that's at least a return to it for the one that fell in the bottom lane. Yeah, unfortunately though, it's not going to lead to a huge amount because Dragon is still worth so much gold in the long run. Although, to be fair, on the red team side, having a massive 8 kill deficit against you also really doesn't help that much. That's a, that's a huge amount of items you're not getting. I mean, we can see that Lucian's already starting to build up his Trinity Force and his Bloodthirster at the same time, because why not? Jarvin's gone super aggressive rather than super tanky. He's got the Lizard Elder item. Although Energy Ice Cold takes a huge amount of damage there. Gets caught in, uses the Shockwave to try and stop any potential engagements from happening. Brom is also forced to stand in the fight, but does go down. Jarvin does come in for the assist, gets the Cataclysm, but... Ice Cold very smart on the flash and even gets caught out by Chriso using the Bolt Breaker Punch to keep him in line. And Cassidy meanwhile way up in the top lane manages to secure a tower and the red team now possibly going to do a three man dive onto the mid lane tower. Managed to pick that up nice and quick. We'll carry on the chase though and Lissandra goes down, to, uh, right, sorry, goes down to Lissandra right down the jungle well to the bottom of the screen. Meanwhile though run up in the bot lane. Lucian is really far ahead, he's super pushed on, he's stuck behind the tower range, Vi will go in with the Assault and Battery, lands a couple of auto attacks but it's going to be the tower that will mop that up rather nicely. So much aggression coming out here now from the red team, they're really starting to clutch at straws. Well they're doing, very, they're doing actually quite well in these engagements too and I have to highlight a very smart item pickup on the Lissandra. First item pickup from Rolla Nomicon against a rise in lane. Considering Ryze's ultimate, Desperate Power gives attacks, uh, gives rather, cool, no it doesn't give cool damage reduction at all, I'm, I'm clutching its scores now, it gives movement speed and spell value, among other things of course, along with the AoE on his abilities. 
that spell ban is going to be completely negated if Lissandra can land strong burst. If you can land heavy burst onto Rise, get him below 40% health, apply that Grievous Wound, then Rise is going to be in a bad position for continuing the fight, and Lissandra can just kite him, throw Ice Shards, and win the fight that way. Very, very smart play. I had to. I was going to point out how Lucian was doing so much damage onto Caitlyn in the bottom lane, but he did overextend, eventually getting picked up by Chriso as he rotated from the mid. Yeah, very nice play coming up from Chriso, as we were saying. Still, you know, might as well look at the item source. Everything calms down a little bit, although Oriana does get a little bit of aggression on from Garvin and Thresh finds a nice free um, brawn there in the river all by his own. So, unfortunately, it's not going to result in much with the ace in the hole being blocked by Unbreakable. Could see a 3v2, 3v3 fight, so I forgot all about Catalan and even Lucian's getting on the action. Here goes aggressive onto Milky Land. A full channel nearly off the coming, gets the kill, carries on the aggression, wants to get Chris now, wants to get revenge for earlier. He's gonna let it slide, maybe? No, gets the kill, it's gonna be the Lightbringer double shot there, gets the kill there, and even Brom gets in as well and gets Semex hats. A 3 0 engage there in the jungle, now the blue team going for a nice full on dive here for this bot lane tower, going for the continued objective play and letting you know who is boss. Although Lucian gets caught right on the tower and does go down. Mm, that was incredibly over aggressive from Lucian there. Either he didn't communicate that well with his team, but he did end up dying actually to the Yord and Snap Trap of Caitlyn rather than the damage from Lissandra or the turret. So that's another kill onto the AD carry, meaning that Caitlyn's keeping up fairly well with Lucian, all things considered. Yes, she's behind in CS. Yes, she's got two less kills, but she's still got four kills, which is actually <coughs> quite considerable. She does have that Bloodthirster completed. She's also got a dagger to her name, which will probably get built towards Phantom Dancer or Static Ship, which means she's not going to stack out too slowly by comparison. Now, compared to Lucian, of course, he's going for the Bloodthirster Trinity Force, which is a standard Lucian build, and then Lucian might go into something like a Zephyr later on, hence but very, very well. Still carrying on at the item so the mid laners going completely different item builds here. Ariana's going for your typical AP build, it's gone for the Athenes and it's going to get herself a fancy hat. Whilst Cassidy has gone straight into Rod of Ages and are looking to build the Archangels. So yeah, very... this, is, this is the new Cassidy effectively. Because they've they muted some of his damage a little bit, Cassidy now has to build tanky because he can't guarantee 100 to 0. Unless he combos perfectly, on a target that isn't full health, it, unless it's like really late game and he's on a five item build, then he is unlikely to be able to hunt to zero. It's not going to happen really, especially without Ignite. So you do have to build a, a good deal tankier to assure that you are going to at least survive the fights to try and actually make sure someone goes down. Yeah, Cassidy has had a massive change. Brawn there, as you can see on your screen, picks up a nice little pink wall, so the ward walls still haven't ended with all these trinket changes, the pink walls are still the biggest victim. You should donate a dollar to your pink ward. They do a huge amount of work and get nothing for it other than absolute abuse. Although Lucian goes heavy aggressive out at the bottom and gets caught out entirely by Vida. Very nice play, but unfortunately it is going to result in the blue team completely collapsing here. Chriso goes absolutely destroyed and gone. Milky X gets caught in the Cataclysm, but is going to pick up Oriana and Lissandra, both by them, both proc the ult. Command Shock does a massive amount of damage. Rise goes down as well, and it's currently 2 for 2. Uh, sorry, 2 for 3, sorry, in favour of Threatening. They're carrying on. Sex is going down massively hard. Lucian goes in super aggressive, doesn't quite get the kill, but Cassidy is there to. Oh, Lucian does get the kill, sorry, but Cassidy does go in for a little bit of a mop up, doesn't secure anything. Brom also just goes down as well. Either that or my UI bugged out entirely because it just came up with 5 seconds on his death timer. And no, Cassidy didn't watch it. No, goes down to Sebex. Very nicely played there by Caitlyn. Yeah, but that's actually a prolonged 5 for 2 in favour of the red team. So despite being behind a good 3,000 gold, they are still able to win fights. And despite their engagement getting burst down early on, the fact was that Lucian did die trying to go aggressive onto Lissandra in the second fight. Had he stayed back a bit, he may have been able to pick off additional kills since the damage is so high at this point. Yeah, it was a little bit unfortunate for him there. But it still didn't mean that all was wasted. I mean, he's now finally picked up his Sheen. He's definitely now looking to 
a finish off Trinity Force, hopefully on the next back or his next death, depending on whichever comes first. Braun, meanwhile, is now starting to build up his Mokui Treads, looking to build some tenacity to try and get out those death sentences a little bit sooner. Thrash, meanwhile, has got a completely different build. He's actually gone for cooldown reduction boots, which is rather amusing, and he's already finished off his Talisman of Ascension. Well, cooldown reduction on a Thresh is of course very, very nice. It means that engagement potential from Death Sentence is so much more prevalent. And if he can consistently land Death Sentence, Death Sentences as well, then it means that they're even more threatening, of course, because the cooldown is reduced by three seconds if it hits a target. So it's almost worth aiming it at a minion just so that it's going to hit. Or rather, it's better to hit a minion than fully miss, because you'll still get that reduced cooldown. Yep, a nice little bit of aggression coming out here from the blue team. They are fully stacked up here in the mid lane. They are looking to push down on the aggression. Dragon, of course, was taken up by the red team only just a few moments ago, so there is going to be no free ride here, no free gold for them to take and keep to themselves. Currently, 21 and a half minutes into the game. Two towers all, 36,000 to 35,000 gold, 18 kills to 14. So despite this early, the, the early cripple the red team had, they've really pulled themselves back in really nicely. It's very interesting because looking at the numbers, things shouldn't be going in favour of the red team right now. Like CS-wise, they are pretty much even or down in every respect. But the fact is they have picked up a dragon, and that dragon was considerably later in the game than the one blue team had. Since the gold you get from dragon scales with time, to the point when it's almost equivalent to a baron, that's a very, very big thing to look for. And the later the game goes, the more dragon scales to still be a relevant threat or a an objective that teams will very much want to keep picking up. Yep, everyone's just recalling now, taking a little bit too much aggression. Uh, Roman is coming back now with his Mercury Trades, a couple more wards. And Jarwin, uh, still not quite finished up on his next item. He has got the Warden as well, which I suspect will go straight into a random atonement, which wouldn't be too surprising. He's got a Banshee's Veil as well, so any of that early magic damage that Orion or the Sandra can dish out, even the Death Sentence, gets completely ignored. And there we go, we just see it proc away. Oh, that could be a bit of a waste for Banshee's Veil if it's just used to ignore the Death Sentence. Yeah, and it still counts as the death sentence hitting, so that reduced cooldown on the ability is still applied to my yet, and he is not going to care in the slightest that he got burned on the back as well. Especially since Job is the tankiest member of the blue team at this point. He's tanky, but not by that much. He's only just about hit the 2000 mark in terms of HP, so he will go down pretty quick if all the damage is applied to him in one solid burst. Still waiting for some engage to happen here. Everyone's just skimming around one another, just poking around, trying to find an opening. Jalvin is hopping off to the side. He's obviously waiting for it. On the red team, we weren't looking to start to command this and then come out. Now Jalvin gets quite entirely forced to flag and drag away. The box comes out from Thresh, culling as well. Everything is flying wild. Kells even teleports in, manages to land a huge amount of damage. He's forced to entomb herself in the ice. Even popping Zonius as well, trying to stay alive a little bit longer. Braum and Cassidy both get down to Caitlyn. It's going to be Lissandra goes down to Rise. It's Coley 2 for 1 in favour of the red team. Even get a couple of kills. Ace in the hole comes out, but everybody on the blue team just gets away on bare minimum health. Bob from Lucian, who did the smart thing and stepped well outside of the fight. That was a well orchestrated fight from the red team. Now, I'm not sure if it was intentional, but I'm going to claim that it was. Lissandra teleported in and then acted as a buffer for a massive destruction for three members of the blue team. Cassidy went down without response, and Brown was stuck on the other side of Lissandra as well, so that was two kills picked up without answer. Lissandra went down, but considering how long she managed to keep those other three members of Blue Team occupied, then that's still a very worthy effort, and that's why the team, I think, why the fight went so well for Red Team right now, and why they are currently at an advantage. Yep, and now... It's going to be all hell return on the red team now as Milky X takes a huge amount of damage, actually manages to get caught by the on Blaze and it is going to be Cassidy who picks up that nice cheeky little kill there using his uh, Void or Energy Ice Cold. They're not willing to give up either. It's going to take the way Rapes away from Cassidy and make sure that can't be secured. Now the blue team are actually going to start doing Baron. I also want to gain a little bit of gold, though Dragon will be up in a minute. So if they can't get Baron, they can certainly do Dragon with no trouble at all. 
although all the aggression is coming out of here. Caitlyn is off to the side, Cassidy is on the run as well, so starting to lay down a fair bit of damage. The soldier goes straight on it again and tombs herself. Very nicely done, he even gets a huge amount of damage. Kayla gets the steal! The cunning comes out, unfortunately it lands on nobody. Kelsey is able to absorb all that damage, so Brawl is going to pick up the kill. Kayla manages to pick up Jarvin. It's currently three members of the blue team left alive, though. With all the health that's missing, Cassidy will be soon to follow. And the only two kills that the blue managed to get were Lissandra and Vi, who at the end of the day aren't really that fantastic a kill take, because they will just be taking a loss for days on end. by Mike Yet as he came out of his base. Does mean that the Baron buff is not on three members of the red team right now since Mike X was dead and of course Vi and Lissandra died in that engagement. But the two major carries, Oriana and Caitlyn, still have that Baron buff applied to them. They got that bonus gold and that's actually stacking up to a two and a half thousand gold advantage right now. It looks like the three of them, that being of course Thresh, Caitlyn and Oriana, are gonna head towards the dragon. No, it's just going to be Thresh and Ariana. That's interesting. Caitlyn, I think, more wanting to pick up that turret. She does pick it up. There is no ward coverage of the dragon right now for the blue team. This will be an uncontested take. That's actually extending to a very considerable gold lead at over 4,000. It is. It's actually very considerable, especially when you consider at the start of the game it was 12 to 8, and the red team actually looked like they had completely lost this fight. Focusing on the objective play and Doing good team fights is certainly keeping them in this, which I'll have to wait and see where things go. Might as well look at the items that whilst everyone's backing off to recover a bit. So Rise is now gone Roa, Archangels, and is going to start building up, uh, I'm guessing his own Banshee's Veil with the Spectre's Cow. We've got the opposing Lissandra, it's gone Zonya's Marana Nomicon, and is looking to build the Abyssal Scepter as well, looking to really lay down the hurt with uh, some spell pet. Absolutely. Jungle is right now looking to be stacking quite well towards the late game. Of course, Jarvan still hasn't finished off that round of Zoman just yet. Does have, of course, the Banshee's Veil and the Spirit of the Elder Lizard at his disposal, along with the Hex Drink, which he's had for a fair long period of the game right now. I think he had it since about 15 odd minutes into the game, which means it has been providing him that wonderful shield bonus against Orianna's burst and the Sun's burst too, of course. In the meantime, we do see the Orianna and Vi trying to combo to go aggressive on Rai's good use of the Rune Prison stops the follow-up engagement from Vi. He's going to make it back to his turret fairly safely. The culling was burnt by Lucian there to try and dissuade any further engagements. And Red Team are going to be happy with that pickup and just fall back. Speaking of the AD carries right now, Lucian has completed that Trinity Force with the Bloodlust he has had for quite a long time now. He's picked up a pickaxe, which is more than likely going to head towards a last whisper just to try and get some more damage down with that armor pen. Kaelin right now, 9 and 5, out doing loose in terms of KD. Oh, nice engage there coming out from Jarvan, gets a nice good flag around, knocks everybody up into the air, but Kasselin straight on as well, manages to avoid walk in and get a couple of extra bits. Milky X takes a huge amount of damage, gets an Oriana shield for safety, the Sandra is also forced to Use her glacial path to get out of the fight. And even manages to strike on Cassidy, but it doesn't quite stop him. He can just carry on the Void Assault. Gets the Lantern. Well, the Sandra was going to get the Lantern for the save, but doesn't need it. Gets a double kill. Very nicely played. And Brom still off to the side. Landing all those strikes of the ram. Yeah, meanwhile, the Red going to have to fall back a bit. It looks like Lucian and Bram are out for blood. And and it's not going to stop Caitlyn, though. The Unbreakable will only stop one hit, the rest of the orders attacks will land. The Command World Dissonance does land as the Cullen drops. Manages to keep Caitlyn and Oriana in the line of fire. The Command World Shield does keep a protective for a little while longer. But unfortunately it is going to result in very little. The Rise is going to chase around as well, hoping to flank Caitlyn out. But a nice 90 caliber net will bring her to safety. Yeah, kill still advantage of the blue team right now. But it looks like Red just has that advantage in more protracted engagements. There doesn't seem to be a really, really strong follow-up from the blue team. They have a great engagement, but the cleanup just isn't there right now. It looks like, for the most part, Kassim just isn't, I think, fulfilling properly, completely fulfilling that fulfill, completely fulfilling that role for his team. And once again, he goes down after trying to chase down Sandra. Didn't even have to use her Zonyas. I'm not even sure if it was on cool at the time. It wasn't. 
did use that frozen tomb onto Castin for the stun. Kill goes over, of course, onto Caitlyn with the ace in the hole. Now 10 and 5. Only sat on the three item build, but considering how far behind Lucian she was earlier, that's a very exceptional score to have right now. Infinity Edge completed, Bloodthirst are completed, the Phantom Dancer completed as well. I He's either going to go for a defensive item or a last whisper, I'm saying, for the next pickup. If she wants to just beat down pretty much everyone, then it'll be the last whisper. If she wants to survive a bit longer in fights, then it'll be that. A guardian angel or a banshee's veil or something similar to that to try and evade one CT ability, be it a rune prison or a winter's bite or potentially a null sphere or something from Cassidy just to negate some of the bursts that could be coming down. I think guardian angel though, with a rather burst heavy team like this, is probably the best pickup. You say that actually, I think a better pickup might be the Mercurial Suicide, but I'll have to wait though as Chris goes right on the aggression here. The Command Shockwave does come out from my own, unfortunately picks up absolutely no one, so it's going to be a 5v5 team fight possibly right in the top lane. Lucian is actually way, way off in the mid lane, still rotating around from the bottom. Unfortunately, he is going to be hit as the fight starts, and the red team are going to think twice. They are going to use the combo distance and back out of this and possibly head around to do. Baron, maybe? They certainly have the timer on it from Caitlyn's kill earlier. So I wouldn't be too surprised if they went for it. Instead, no, they think best with themselves and let it all slide and will just carry on their aggressive push elsewhere. So no, get back. Steal away first, oh, yes, yeah, always steal away blue. But back to what I was saying earlier though. Mercurial Scimitar, I also wouldn't be surprised as a pick up here because it does remove any debuff and it will still give Caitlyn some AD and magic resist. That would be kind of nice if it maybe removed if it removed the concussive blows of Brown, but besides that, I'm not sure where the great advantage lies. It's definitely a better pickup for an AD champion, of course, because it does give that bonus movement speed. If I try to push out the middle lane, all that inhibitor gets that gets quelled quite quickly as Castin Rift walks over the wall. They do not want an inhibitor to go to go down anytime soon, because it's only 32 minutes into the game. And Caitlin almost looked like she was going to attempt to solo Baron from over the wall. Oh, well, why not? She has got the range for it. She has got Phantom Delta, Infinity Edge, uh, Bloodthirst. So if she's feeling brave, she can probably pull it off it. Although the soldier gets caught out in the room prison very nicely and toots herself. Gets caught out by the Bromart, however, is forced to pop her tonyas. And even Oriana is in serious trouble. Gets shut down. It's going to be a double kill on Pollution. And Milky X tried to save the soldier there with the Lantern, but unfortunately resulted in very little. The police now are actually going to start doing Baron. But they're very taking Jarwin and take, taking the blows. They can certainly do it. Cassidy though goes down in the bot lane. Yeah, that, that does mean that Caitlyn and Vi are actually miles No flash on red team. No huge burst from Caitlyn either. Three Baron picked up by blue team. Won't be on the casting, but it's still on four members and that's very, very scary right now. Caitlyn and Vi will pick up the dragon in response. Good flash for good use of the death sentence rather to get over the wall from my kicks, evades the cataclysm of Jarvis. But this is not a good situation for the red team right now. They've been pushing for the longest time and now they're suddenly back to hiding under their turrets. Yep, and the hiding on the turret isn't gonna matter, especially with Baron buff on them. It's gonna be Lucian picking up another kill. He's only 12 or 5 having a whale of a time. And for some reason my mouth went absolutely crazy there. But certainly a very good game for Lucian now. 12 5 has got a Last Whisper, Bloodthirster, and Trinity Force. Blue team looking to do Dragon. Realise that it's gone, so Red team happily keeping some objectives in their control, even though they just lost two towers, one after the other. So quick, and shedding so close there. Vi even throws out a wall to see where Lucian got to. Unfortunately, not in time enough for her to get a free Vault Baker across. That was an absolutely <coughs> amazing flash from shedding right there. Saw the, uh, the assault battery went on, to, got knocked up, got hit by the ace in the hole, almost got shockwaved by Oriana. Flashes out of it at the last second, guaranteeing that he would survive that. That was, I think, the only way on earth that he would survive that. Because he definitely didn't have a lens computer. The only way that he could have survived that fight, and he pulls it off. Well played to him. Yep, a proper illusion player like that. Better, a much better player than myself, it must be said. So, as we're sitting here at the 35 minute mark now, 4 towers to 5 in favour of the red team. 59,000 gold to 62,000 gold, sorry, in favour of the red team, but the kills are still in favour of blue team 27 to 23. 
Everything so far has been most certainly in Blue Team's favour, especially with the recent Double Tower and the Baron as well on four members. And they're doing a very nice job of recovering, losing that mid lane and nearly losing their mid lane in hip, which is still open to aggression. A little bit of backdooring from the likes of, I would suspect, Oriana or Kaelin, but even Lissandra would be enough to pick that off. I think only Kaelin would be the one to be able to pull that off. I don't think that Oriana and Lissandra have the tools to quickly burst down in this And they need to in this situation. Job going aggressive with the flag and flag drag. Yep. Everyone just getting this good escape play. Mikey X and Chris are going to have to run away from Job. Run away, but no, you can't. Not with Cataclysm on you. Unfortunately, it does get caught, and Tolly, even with the box, it stops absolutely nothing. Christian goes in with the assault and battery. Cassidy is forced to peel off to the side and actually start to focus Oriana, who is going to try and come in from the side. Unfortunately, who does get melted down by Lucian the Bromb. Cassidy sees nothing of the assist for that. And creates again, that's a very nice uh, glacial prison. And into Zonius and gets a double kill. Kaelin also picks herself up a double kill, and that is the first ace of this game. The red team are absolutely loving that. Yeah, Lucian's gonna try and go for that inhibitor, and he's got way plenty enough damage to try and 2v1 right now. Kaelin having to flash away from her. Mike does not have enough damage, but there's the engagement. Kex, of course. Home guard boots after that back. Picks up the ace now for red team. So as their inhibitor is about to go down, they're gonna run straight down that middle lane. Pick up an inhibitor for themselves. Um, they might be able to push on a tower, probably the inner in the bottom lane, since the minions are pushing them. Yep, they're gonna suddenly pick this up in no time at all. They'll probably rotate rounds to bot lane since they can easily get that tower as well. There's a nice big minion wave swinging round. This middle lane inhibitor is all but done now. And there we go. So a very nice engagement from the red team earlier on. Managed to pick up those four kills, keep pollution well out of the fight as well, making him focus on one target, which was Unfortunately, Oriana, but Oriana did her job anyway, managed to have a nice command shockwave picking up those few kills. And I feel like somehow I managed to swap positions, me doing culling, you doing play by play. Uh, How's this happened? This might, be, this might have happened. We are, we are suddenly swapping roles. This is fine. No. It's, it's fine, it's a sign of a good partnership. Anyway, Collective gets caught out there, even gets caught on the box. A very nice rift walk at the last second doesn't actually trigger the box. No, it does not. Apparently, he goes blink straight out of that. Looks like the red team are going to try and stay towards the aggressive right now, but instead, it does look like they're going to just back instead. They do have a decent amount of gold to their name. Caitlyn has picked up the last whisper. Also gone for a hex drinker herself, so definitely a little bit afraid of that cast in burst. Understandably so. Of course, Fry is dealing a lot of damage right now too. So more of Malmortius means that Kaylin's going to be incredibly scary, all things considered. A late game team fight, if she goes low, she could be critting for an excess of 2,000 damage. And get that onto a Lucian, that's almost one-shotting him. Yeah, I've just sat there and done the maths myself. That is actually really quite scary. Although Lucian, likewise, has actually gone down an entirely different route now. He's currently just ticked over the 300 mark. He's now got the Bloodthirst of 24 Falsus, but Infinity Edge has even picked up a Brutalizer. So he's gone super heavy on Armor Pen. He is looking to punish the likes of Oriana and the soldier who have built zero armor other than the Zonyas. And even Kaylin is going to struggle. She, Kaylin is actually probably going to get absolutely melted in a 1v1 situation. I wouldn't be surprised if it came down to who struck first between those two in a fight. Effectively speaking, it also means that the culling doesn't need to be used as a clearance tool and it can actually be used as a pseudo engage, effectively. You use that onto a couple of targets, try and hit them enough times to fully stack out that item. Uh, it's like, yeah, yeah, to fully stack out the item, I'm talking about Black Cleaver, of course. And then you go in for the engage with Jarvis. Increases the damage that's going to be held by Jarvis. Means that Cataclysm's going to have more of an impact. It's not going to apply too much to the likes of Rise, but Cassidy, of course, does have that Nether Blade W, so the reduction of armor will help out there a little bit. But I think it's just the, 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 the fact that Lucian's just wanted to say, okay, how are we going to win this? More damage. And he's entirely right. He's surviving fights fine at the moment. All he needs to do is kill things quicker. And a Black Cleaver pickup is more than certainly going to help him. Yeah, well, um, I remember there was a fantastic saying, which is, if in doubt, use more dynamite, but I think I might be 
uh, thinking along the same lines as Zig, to make sure that whatever is going to kill you can't kill you back. So as everything carries on in this game, 40 minutes in now, everyone's really starting to get to our final item builds, even everybody's out actually fully kitted out, there's no more potions or anything left to shy off that of the supports with the pink wards. Rise is the only one left with a free item slot, be interesting to see what he picks up there, wouldn't be surprised if he picked up a second rower, because, well, why not? To be honest, I've seen, I, 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 I was having a mess around in the previous season as Rise, and I built four Rod of Ages, so there's no reason why I can't have it. There's no reason at all. Yeah, certainly makes Rise very, very tanky. Blue team heads to it, does come back to Jogger does get the barrel though, a nice big engage happens here, and once again, Ketch does a fantastic engage. Oriana though is forced to pop us on Zevix though does get the first kill of the engage, gets the legendary status. Nearly gets casted as well. Oriana though continues to chase. Vi is looking to become the ultimate wrecking ball delivery system, but can't find anyone. Everyone seems to have absolutely disappeared in the wake of the fight. And now the blue team again are going to lose his mid lane inhibitor in no time at all. Jarman is forced to recall, and Cassidy is forced to teleport away. But fortunately, Thresh will find him, but it doesn't interrupt. So now Thresh is nowhere in the fight, so there is no locker of the Iron Solari for anyone to use it. And Jarman starts the aggression straight on to uh, Nassandra and gets full damage, goes right down. Unfortunately, he is going to be right back in the game with the GAs. And Caitlyn immediately capitalizes, gets a double kill, and the red team are going to get this Nexus down in no time. GG. And that was exceptional combo play from the red team <coughs> in the last fight. That was a one more combo. Hex came in at a perfect time, used that Frozen 2 on himself, dealt so much AoE damage while keeping himself invulnerable during that time. Didn't even need to use Hazanyas in that fight because the immunity from that burst everyone from the blue team down so low that they were way too worried about their own health bars to deal considerable damage back. Then in comes Chriso with the ball on him. Command Shockwave lands onto three, even more damage. Caitlyn comes in for the cleanup and that fight went so well for Red Team. Blue Team did pick up the Baron from that, but they maybe underestimated what Red Team could do. There was full vision. I think that might have almost been a panic Baron from Blue Team saying, we're starting to lose fights. We might need Baron to win this. And they didn't effectively clear out the ward coverage and paid the price for it. Red Team picked up the win after 45 or 41 and well, we'll say 42 minutes. It's 41.55. No one will matter. Yeah, no, 42 minutes. Get, stick to the nearest whole minute. So, very nicely done. Thank you very much for watching, guys, and we'll see you next time.